As the novel coronavirus continues to spread around the globe and the death toll mounts, these scientists in Germany, like countless others around the world, are in a race against time, trying to develop a vaccine as fast as possible for an illness the scientific world has a lot to learn about. Well, the challenge, first of all, is that the virus is unknown. So you don't know which kind of protection you need in order to, to stimulate the immune system, in order to be protected. German-American company CureVac, whose CEO has been to the White House to meet President Trump, makes vaccines by essentially embedding the virus's code into human cells to help the body protect itself. We are making the body to produce your own vaccine or your, your own drug. Each of these little tubes contains a different construct of the virus's code. Right now, the scientists at the main lab in Germany are trying to find out which one is the safest and most effective to be turned into a vaccine. While they don't want to put a date on it yet, they believe they're getting closer. We are in preparation for a clinical trial. Out of the different constructs, we have to get the best ones into the clinics, and we are in constant discussions with the regulatory authorities. The pressure couldn't be higher, with the number of novel coronavirus cases jumping every day and the global economy taking a beating from the coronavirus's effects. President Trump, at a meeting with drug makers, urged the industry to come up with a vaccine ASAP. We're moving aggressively to accelerate the process of developing a vaccine. Uh, a lot of good things are happening, and they're happening very fast. I said, do me a favor, speed it up, speed it up, and they will. We need to be prepared. While U.S. health officials acknowledge it will be at least a year before one will be certified, the company says it's working overtime to get it done soon. If you compare normal vaccine development takes several years, we are fighting in outbreak right now and therefore regulatory authorities are hands-on and trying to do this within a year's time. As a major transportation hub for China and the world, Hong Kong is suffering. And on the tarmac at the Hong Kong International Airport, you can clearly see the toll of the coronavirus outbreak. That's where we filmed rows of dozens and dozens of grounded Cathay planes. According to a study by the South China Morning Post, the city's flagship airline has scrapped more than three quarters of its weekly flights in March. Meanwhile, inside the Hong Kong International Airport, you will see this vast, empty terminals, board staff, and a flight display with cancellation after cancellation. Stark images of an industry that has been hammered by the virus. And last week, Cathay said 75% of its staff would take unpaid leave, affecting some 25,000 employees. The Gawra oil field in eastern Saudi Arabia is what helped build the kingdom's reputation as the world's number one exporter. This field was king of the castle, if you will, for decades, and it still produces nearly four million barrels a day. But rising production in the United States, Norway, and Brazil is making life more complicated for the OPEC Plus producers. And this was before the coronavirus. It is a perfect storm that swept prices into bear market territory and was the talk on the floor at this major energy conference in Riyadh. The coronavirus uh, had a significant impact uh, on oil demand, which is coming on top of already abundantly supplied uh, oil markets and growing non-OPEC production. Uh, so this market impact is essentially multiplied both from the demand and the supply side. How bad is it? The IEA projects the first quarterly drop in demand since 2009, when the global financial crisis set in. After rising prices due to U.S.-Iran security tensions in early January, the international benchmark had lost close to $20 a barrel, with the coronavirus emerging quickly and creating market havoc. This collapse may in turn make the job of the de facto head of OPEC Plus, Saudi Arabia's energy minister, Abdulaziz bin Salman, a bit easier, not having to strong-arm the other 22 producers, especially Russia, to make deeper production cuts. This is being imposed in part by China. The world's largest oil importer has already reduced shipments as growth stalls. Similar concerns plague South Korea and Japan. Here on the Arabian Peninsula, the national oil companies see this sell-off in the same context as a decade ago, and again during 2016's oil price collapse. They can weather the storm as the world's lowest cost producers. Our job at this point in time and at, at all times 
is to stay very agile and very resilient. But due to high budget outlays in the broader Middle East, no one benefits from a market route like this. John Defterius, CNN Business, in the Gawa field of Saudi Arabia. Thank you.